Hi, this is Esan. Welcome to lab number four. The topic for today would be knowledge of results, results, and knowledge of performance. Knowledge of performance. That would be KP. So, in this lecture video, first of all, I'm going to briefly review some of the related theories that you are required to understand in order to perform this lab. So first of all, we'll talk about the theories and I would request you guys not to skip this section of the video and actually listen to what I have to say before you actually dive in and answer any of the questions. In the second phase of, the, of this video, I will show you how you can collect the data and how you should collect the data using Excel and um, I'll show how you can compute the absolute error from the data. Um, so if, um, if you do not understand absolute error in that case I would request you to refer to lab number two. Um, later I'll show you how you can use Excel to create graphs which will help you to better visualize all these data that you have collected from and using those graphs how you can infer some of the underlying ideas however um, what I mean by that would be I'll show you how to compute the graph or, or how you can create the graph but um, what you will understand from the graph is something that you have to write on your own uh, I will also um, talk about a um, few things that you should be careful about while collecting this data and subsequently computing the average absolute error and the graph. So uh, that being said, um, the last thing that we'll talk about in this video would be uh, where I give you some hints into some of the few tricky questions. Um, again. Uh, most of the hints that I talk about here is already discussed in the part of the video where I talk about the related theories. So let us start with the related theories. Related theories. Um, before we actually talk about KR, which would be knowledge of results. and KP, which is knowledge of performance. Let us first have a look into the broader idea of feedback. So feedback from the perspective of motor control and learning is a generic term that describes information people would receive about, about their performance of a motor skill during or after their performance. So it actually gives an idea about how you have performed and based on such performance you use some information to fix your next performance. This is what we call feedback. So feed so we so there are various kinds of feedback. Let me first read all this. So feedback can be of two types. Feedback. One is task intrinsic feedback. The other one would be augmented feedback. In this lab, we are only going to talk about augmented feedback in terms of knowledge of results and knowledge of performance. However, I'll also give a little hint into the idea of task intrinsic feedback. So, um, task intrinsic feedback is something that almost everyone would have in common unless any of the sensory systems in our human body has failed. So what do I mean by that? From my previous statement, you can understand that 
this kind of feedback has something to do with the sensory perceptual information, uh, which is a natural part of performing a skill because when you perform a skill, you are actually interacting with your environment and understanding and perceiving a lot of, a lot of information through your sensors like it can be vision, it can be auditory, uh, it can be auditory, it can be your sense of touch or it can also be other pro, pro, set, div systems. So you can understand the information that you receive from your vision or auditory or touch sensors or proprioceptive sensors has to do with task intrinsic feedback. So to summarize everything, I would say task intrinsic feedback is something which is related to your sensors. So the sensory feedback which is naturally available while performing a skill would be task intrinsic feedback. So it's a sensory feedback system. Sensory feedback system. Then it has uh, natural. It, it is naturally available. Naturally available. And the third point would be something intuitive and not obvious. It, that is not always task intrinsic feedback system or feedback is the best method to learn something new. Not the best method for new motor skill. Because if you think about this, if this was not true. In that case, you could have learned anything just by doing it yourself, and there was no need for therapists or coach, coaches, and whatnot. Now let us talk about augmented feedback. But before we do that, let us clear this segment of our board. Okay, delete, delete, delete. Okay, done. Now let's bring this in the middle. Okay, let's start. So now we'll talk about augmented feedback. Augmented feedback, um, as the name suggests, means uh, feedback which are additional to something. Now here in motor control and learning, augmented feedback would mean additional feedback which enhances our information, or actually not our information, which enhances the task intrinsic feedback that we get from our sensory systems. Uh, for example, performance information that you receive from your coach, therapists, or teacher would be augmented information. And when these informations are provided in order to improve your performance, and based on such information when you decide to change yourself that would make such augmented information augmented feedback so to summarize augmented feedback is a generic term which is used to describe information about a performance that would supplement your sensory feedback or task intrinsic feedback information and it comes from an external source to the performer. Um, so, augmented feedback needs to be additional information, additional to task intrinsic feedback, 
it comes from an external source external source it is also known as extrinsic or external feedback extrinsic or external feedback now that we have an understanding of augmented feedback now we'll look into knowledge of results and later followed by knowledge of performance and how these are related to motor performance measures that were discussed motor performance measures which have been discussed in lab number three and a little in lab number two while we discussed about outcome measures and motor performance production measures production measures uh, so okay. um, so knowledge of results as you will see is related to outcome measures outcome measures because it is a kind of an external feedback or information which is externally presented which highlights the outcome of an attempt to perform a skill so it talks about outcome of an skill so performance outcome performance outcome for example um, a physical therapist might provide information to the patient about how close the person was to the desired range of uh, target motion maybe for the internal hip rotation so this is kind of a it can also be only a yes or a no signal whether you performed properly or you never you did not perform properly one thing that you need to be careful is when you provide uh, someone with knowledge of results information make sure that this information is something that he doesn't get from his task intrinsic in sensory systems so it can't be task intrinsic feedback from sensory system so there should not be any conflict if task intrinsic feedback is providing that, that information in that case providing KR uh, would not give the person additional information if you think about it okay I just realized I made a small mistake uh, with my English writing here it should not be outcomes measure it should be outcome measure and here in number two it should not be outcome of n skill it should be outcome of a skill so now that i've corrected some of the typos to summarize knowledge of results is a category of augmented feedback that gives information about the outcome of an attempt to perform a skill now let us move on to knowledge of performance you will see that knowledge of performance is very related to production measures so it's not um, some kind it's not a feedback where you just say yes or no and it's certainly not a feedback measure where you only talk about the outcome but how you have produced the outcome and how you can change such production measures so that you get better Oops, I've made an error again. Uh, how you have produced it. So, knowledge performance deals with additional information that helps you fix your uh, or adjust your body so that while performing a motor skill, you know how and where you have made the error and you know how to fix it. 
So to be a little more precise, uh, knowledge of performance provides the performer an idea about his or her movement characteristics that led to the performance outcome. So it talks about the movement characteristics, characteristics, and so you can understand it's very different from knowledge of results. The major difference being uh, the aspect of performance the information would refer to. Um, just to give an example, if someone is trying to learn how to uh, shoot an arrow using a bow, in such case, if after his, his or her first trial, uh, the arrow shoots off to a very uh, shoots off and makes a huge uh, error, in that case, the coach could say that he or she pulled the bow a little to the left at the release of the arrow. Um, so this is something you can understand that the person would not understand because he never sees where his hands were because it was at the back of his head. And so it is additional information to task intrinsic feedback and it is not knowledge of results. So it's not always that you provide this information verbally. It can also be done using technology, say for instance videos. So videos are always usually related to knowledge of performance. What I mean by video is if uh, if the coach would have shown a video of her students performing a task and help the students realize his or her mistakes just by watching the video. Um, so by the, this, we end our discussion on feedback, where we have talked about task intrinsic feedback, augmented feedback, uh, within augmented feedback framework, we have discussed the ideas of knowledge of results, knowledge of performance. We talked about their definition, definitions, and we gave some examples, and we have also talked about the differences and how they are related to motor performance measures. Performance measures that being said I would still recommend that you go back to your online lecture and class lecture notes so it's a recommendation please go back to your online lectures and class lecture notes to have a better understanding of this um, all this information when you hear again and again will actually help you to understand the whole idea in a very general way. Uh, moreover, I would also recommend you to go to the book um, and look into the examples of KP and KR because this will help you to answer one of the questions in lab as well. So this is related to one of the questions. In lab. Um, so now we'll talk about uh, fits and Osner model, uh, which actually provides three stages of motor skill learning scheme. This is related to question number four. So question number four, you need to use the idea of the Fitz and Posner model and look into the various characteristics of the three stages. So look at the characteristics, characteristics of the three stages and see how they are related and see how they are related they are related to KR and KB KR and KB so let me remove this part first okay so, uh, okay, so let's delete this 
Now select the pencil, select the color, which is black now. Okay, so the three stages of Vincent Posner's motor skill learning model was the first one being cognitive cognitive stage, number two being associative associative phase or stage, I'll use phase, and number three is autonomous autonomous um, stage. Okay. And what we want you to understand is this phases in different phases of a um, so when someone would try to learn a new motor skill they will undergo from phase one to phase three as they practice and get feedback and other good things uh, however you should understand from the definitions of KR KP and task intrinsic feedback that you cannot always use all of this in all the phases or the stages of learning so maybe cognitive stage you can provide um, KR but um, in the autonomous phase it should be more KP I'm just saying an example it is, does not necessarily mean what I just said is correct it's just an idea so different stages has to do with different um, feedback schemes so it's not that you can just go and use anything on any stage of learning so it has to be a gradually more complex thing so that the person learning the skill is not over overwhelmed but can actually gradually learn as they go through the feedback scheme so in question number four um, one second, okay. in question number four your task is to come up with a clinical or rehabilitation context um, in which you can effectively use KR and KB and show uh, and with an example how you would use it actually however when you come up with that example please consider these three different stages uh, and something that you need to understand is um, explaining all these different three different steps or stages of Fitz and Posner model is beyond the scope of this video. So I would request you to go back and look into your online lectures. And uh, if you have any questions, please come and talk to me during TA hours. Um, so, okay, uh, that being said, uh, we have covered Fitz and Posner model, a very brief overview of the ideas. Uh, and now we'll talk a little about transfer and retention. So now we'll talk about retention and transfer. So retention and transfer. So both of them are a special kind of tests. Um, which helps the researchers to realize how well the motor skill is learned by the participant. It examines the <coughs> persistence characteristics of improved performance due to practicing a skill. And, as I've said earlier, it is used to infer the amount, both of them actually, to infer the amount of uh, learning from performance learning from performance measures so what I wrote here was so I wrote these things here which you didn't see it says performance performance measures so both of these tests helps the researchers understand whether the participant has learned something. Um, so how are these two tests designed? I'll talk about it now. So let us <coughs> first start with retention. Uh, one second please. Retention. So one of the most usual way that you would do a retention test in a motor skill learning situation is to have the participant perform the skill um, that they have 
been practicing after a period of time and this period is uh, special because within this period they have not actually practiced the skill so here this inactive period of time is called uh, retention interval so it's called retention interval and after this interval you actually test the same skill again to see how much they how much of the performance is still intact and this difference that you will use to explain how well the performance how well the skill was learned is basically done by comparing the person's performance level on the first practice day and uh, on the test so it's like um, so how much have you retained have you retained is uh, usually found out have you retained is usually found out by the by taking the difference of performance measures uh, on test day as compared to the first day the first day minus test day a measure of the difference of performance is the retention score so now we'll talk about transfer but first let us move all this way okay. so in transfer uh, the idea these are tests which involves some noble situation noble situation uh, so people where people needs to adapt uh, their learned skill that they have been practicing uh, to fit the characteristics of the new situation so it needs to your you need to somehow adapt and fit into the new situation and researchers usually would use two basic methods of creating novel situations so two ways of creating new situation one uh, is a completely new context in which the person must perform the skill uh, so completely new context and the other one is a novel variation of the skill variation of the learned skill of the learn skill so now that we're done discussing transfer and retention uh, I am certain you are ready to answer question number five where you need to understand these two definitions and some of the basic concepts in order to modify today's experiment and examine the effect of care and KB on learning However, please make sure when you reply to this question, you have considered retention or transfer, or maybe both. So, if you think about it, <coughs> we have already discussed a little about question number 3, 4, and 5, when we have talked about the definition of KB, KR, uh, retention, and transfer and also when we have talked a little about the Fitz and Bosner model these two questions so question number four and five are related to this as we have hinted in the lab handout however if you want to understand it better and um, be happy in that case I would say please refer to the related lectures which has been highlighted in the lab handout as well so go to those following those lectures and listen to what dr. King had to say and also please uh, refer to all the lectures of dr. gently and I'm certain you're going to do great that being said the review session is done now let us see one example how you can collect the data or how you should collect the data collect data and how you can do the basic computation how to do basic computation however I'm not going to show you the whole thing it is something that you need to understand on your own 
However, what I'm going to show you will be enough for you to extend it to fit the whole lab. So let's have a look into the into our Excel.